Suppose f of x is equal to the function log of x. We let g of x be equal to f of x plus 4. I want to find the domain, the range, and the asymptote of g of x. Then we're going to take a look at the inverse function of g, g inverse. And again, I want the domain, the range, and the asymptote. And we'll want sketches of both functions, so for g and g inverse. Now, to begin, I'm going to have to do all of this for f. So f is log of x. So that's the same as saying log to the base 10 of x. Now, if I want to graph this function, okay, there's three things we want to remember, actually four. There are going to be three points where log 10 of x evaluates nicely, and then we'll want to know where the asymptote is. So the three points, if I put 10, 1, or 1 10 into log of x, what comes out? So log of the base 10 of 10, if I put okay, the base in for logarithm, so that's going to give me 1. If I put log the base 10 of 1 in, okay, if I put 1 into any logarithm, I get a 0 out. And then log to the base 10 of 1 tenth, that's 10 to the minus 1. I bring the minus sign out. What's left over becomes 1, so we're going to get a minus 1. So my three points on this are going to be 10 comma 1, 1 comma 0, and 1 tenth comma minus 1. So let's plot those. So that's 10 comma 1. That's going to be 1 comma 0. And then over here somewhere is going to be, that's my point 1, and we go down by minus 1. So three points, and then the asymptote for logarithm, okay, to any base, is going to be the vertical line, okay, your y-axis, which is just x equal to 0. So we're going to have asymptote there. So now I just connect my dots, and that's the graph of f of x. So I want to look at g of x, which is f of x plus 4. Now the rule is, if it says x plus 4, I go to the left by 4. If it said x minus 4, I go to the right by 4. So usually when you alter the function on the inside, when you mess around with x, you do the opposite of what you would think. If I had f of x and then added 4, that would be just moving up by 4. That's going to do exactly what you think. But here it's on the inside, so remember, do the opposite. Okay, another way to think of that. Well, let's take a look at our g of x. So that's going to be log to the base 10 of x plus 4. Think of it this way. If, okay, I just think of x plus 4 as being a variable, okay, if I put 10 in for that, we already know the answer. Log base 10 of 10 is going to be 1. So if I put x plus 4 here, if I put 10 in for this, so that just subs the whole thing out as a 10, I get a 1. If I sub the whole thing out and put a 1 in, I get 0. And if I sub the whole thing out and put in a 0.1, that's going to give me minus 1. So there's nothing new here. That's just what I did before. The trick is going to be, now I forget about the x plus 4. Let's solve for the x, and then we'll put that on the other side. So if I have x plus 4 equal to 10, that means x is equal to 6. x plus 4 equals 1, that means x is minus 3. And then if x plus 4 is equal to 0 0.1, it's going to be equal to minus 3.9. So what happens there? Okay, we're going to take a minus 4 plus a 0.1, so that's going to move me closer to minus 3. Also, we have our asymptote at x equal to 0. So if I have x equal to 0, it's now going to be x plus 4 equal to 0. That's going to be x equal to minus 4. So I've actually got one part of the answer to our first question. The new asymptote is going to be x equal to minus 4. Now, in the picture, you would have gotten that anyway. If our asymptote was here, I'm shifting everything this way by 4. Asymptote goes from 0 to minus 4. What about the other points? Now I've got the point 6 comma 1. Okay, well that's over and up somewhere. Comes over by 4. Okay, then we're going to have the point minus 3, 0. So note, that's something you can really see. On the original graph, that was at 1. 
We're moving it by four to the minus three now. So it's gonna shift from here over by four. So it goes from there to there. And then asymptote goes from zero to minus four. I connect the dots. So the whole graph has come this way by four. Now, how about domain and range? Well, if you look at this, all the points that will be good will be x bigger than minus four. Another way to think about that, if I'm gonna stick x plus four into logarithm, that's only gonna work if x plus four is bigger than zero. So if I have x plus four greater than zero, push the four to the other side, that's x greater than minus four. So it's another way to look at this. The range, it's gonna be all real numbers. That's gonna be all the possible y values. So if you notice, okay, on this end, it's gonna go all the way off to infinity. It'll go slow, but it'll go off. If I come all the way down, that's gonna go down to minus infinity. So it's gonna hit all y values. Another way to think about that, you have your horizontal line test. Your range is gonna be all the y values that get hit with horizontal lines as they go through your graph. So if I take all the horizontal lines here, we're gonna hit every single point on the y-axis. So that's gonna be all reals. Next, g inverse. First, let's get the equation. So what do we do? We're gonna take our g of x, call it y, write our equation, and then we'll switch x and y, solve for y. So that's how you get an inverse function. If we do this, let's take a look. I wanna put this logarithmic equation into exponential form. So we have to interpret the base is 10, the exponent is x, so it's gonna be 10 to the x, that'll be equal to whatever's in the parentheses, so that's y plus four. If I push the four to the other side, that's gonna be our equation for g inverse. So next, we wanna sketch this. So I wanna pay attention to all the obvious features, take the graph of g of x and flip it in the line y equals x. So that's gonna be the line at the 45 degree angle. First thing to note, the asymptote. That's x equal to minus four, that now goes to y equal to minus four. So it's gonna go right here. Then we have points we can look at. So pictorially, I have these two points right here. By flipping this line y equal to x, they're just gonna flip over to these two points right there like that. Now, one point that's worth noting is this minus three comma zero. You switch x and y that goes to zero comma minus three, and that's gonna be this point down here. So it's got y equal to minus three. Okay, that one will go to wherever it went. So, you know, we got enough to where we can connect the dots. This point here is gonna to have to come down to the asymptote. This point here goes to that point, and that has to go off to infinity. The only other thing we could really talk about is the bowl here faces down, so when we flip, it's gonna to go to facing up. So I have to make sure I draw this bowl up. So that's your graph of G inverse. Now, we got the asymptote, how about the domain and range? So the relation between the domain and range for G and G inverse is just, you flip them. So, for instance, if the domain of G is X bigger than minus four, then the range of g inverse is y bigger than minus four. And we note that, okay, this is the line y equal to minus four, that's our asymptote, and then we're gonna hit every y value as we go above that. So our range is definitely given by that little recipe. The domain, again, I take a look at the range for g, that's gonna be all reals. So now the domain for g inverse is all reals, and you see that too. If I take a look at any x, there's gonna be a point above on the graph or below on the graph. So that's everything I can say about G inverse. Now, we have two checks on our work. So the first one is gonna be on the equation. So the idea is if I take an inverse function composed with the original function in either order, we're just gonna get the identity back. So all that means is if I take g of g inverse of x, I get x out. If I take g inverse of g of x, I get x out. So we'll just check it on the first one. g composed of g inverse of x. 
So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to take g, which is log 10 of, say, box plus 4. Wherever I have an x, I'm going to stick in g inverse of x. So where I have x here, I'm just going to stick in this big 10 to the x minus 4. Now, the 4s are going to collapse, leaving me with a 10 to the x. I have log the base 10 of 10 to the x. So by my exponent rule, I could take the x, put it out in front. Now we have log base 10 of 10, that's equal to 1. So what we're left with is x, and that checks our property for the inverse function. So our equation is correct. Next, we could check our graph. So when we did our procedure to get the graph by flipping in the line y equals x, we didn't need to go to all that trouble. Our equation is y equals 10 to the x minus 4. That's something we know how to graph without doing any of this inverse function magic. So let's take a look. So if I wanted to graph 10 to the x, what would I do? Well, I would just need to plot three points at minus 1, 0, and 1. If I stick them into 10 to the x, what happens? If I put minus 1 in, that just says flip it over, I get 1 tenth. If I put 0 in, Okay, anything to the zeroth power, okay, assuming it's positive, is equal to 1. And then if I take 10 to the 1, I just get 10 back. So with those three points and the asymptote, we're going to be able to just reconstruct our graph. So the idea is, if I go back 1, I have 1 tenth. If I have 0, I'm going to have 1. And if I put in a 1, I'm going to be up at 10. Then I'm going to have this asymptote as the x-axis. So we just connect the dots and that's 10 to the x. To get my inverse function, I just subtract 4. That just means shift the graph down by 4. So that moves the asymptote down to y equal to minus 4. Okay, The plot of our y-intercept is going to go down to okay, y value equal to minus 3, and then you just draw in the rest. If you note, that's the same exact graph that I got when I flipped in the line y equal to x. So our check works.